Incredible to think that it is already three years ago, the night of the 15th to the 16th of April 2019, the fire that severely damaged but failed to destroy Notre Dame. So badly damaged that for several days it was unclear if the structure of the building would even survive. Then, though, came the big promise that it would be rebuilt for 2024 in time for the Olympic Games in Paris. The huge works got underway, colossal works, extremely difficult, and all right in the middle of the first wave of coronavirus and with the area covered as well in lead dust, highly toxic, released from the fire in the roof. In Revisited, we promised you we'd follow the reconstruction, a kind of annual checkup. In the last edition, we visited the works with an historical monument architect. We met with local people who live next to Notre Dame, with the designers of the temporary wooden structure that holds the building together, and restorers working hard on the paintings as well. We also met the man in charge of the works, and despite all the difficulties, he still seemed optimistic. But we are still on course to reopen the cathedral to worshippers in 2024. The whole world is watching our progress. We're aware of all that's at stake, we're aware of the difficulties, and we can't afford to make any mistakes. We are all working hard to complete this project and complete it well. So one year on, we are halfway through the restoration time available. But the actual restoration work has still not really begun. Tension then is rising, but is the reopening of Notre Dame in 2024 really feasible? Well, hundreds of tradesmen and women up and down the country certainly hope so, fully engaged in the process. Well, Melina Ouet with uh, Josh Vardy revisit for the second time Notre Dame for France 24. Ancient giants of the forest, soon for the chop. These massive oaks have grown here millimeter by millimeter over hundreds of years. Until 2021, the year that marks the final curtain for some of these arboreal giants. 40 meter long trunks may come crashing to the ground, but this is not the end. These trees are destined for a perhaps unexpected second life. They form part of the 2,000 oaks required for the reconstruction of Notre Dame Cathedral after it went up in flames on April the 19th, 2019. It's the best of the best, as you can see. There's not even a little star. Did you see the growth in the rings? Well, this one grew slowly. It has a fantastic grain. Claire Quinones and Émeric Albert work at the National Forestry Office. They take great care when selecting each tree to cut down. You can clearly see the shape of a beam with a break in the middle. The tree had to have this natural curvature so that it would be as solid as possible and not deform over time. So this tree responds perfectly to the criteria given to us. This oak is indeed among the eight chosen to form the base of the spire. To be specific, a giant wooden frame at the center of this intricate structure. It's due to be rebuilt in the same way as the 19th century spire which disappeared the night of the fire. The tree that we just cut down is of exceptional quality. It's the best of the eight. It's more than 13 meters of A-grade wood, which is the perfect grade. It's quite emotional because due to the exceptional work of several generations of foresters, we are able to harvest it. But before they're added into Notre Dame spire, these trees still have a long adventure ahead of them. The next step takes us to Mayenne, nine months later. At dawn, the aptly named Sawmill of Giants prepares to split up the enormous trunks. Mikhail recently changed career to become a carpenter. He opened his sawmill in 2020. Yeah, it fits. This fledgling business was not chosen at random. I set up this sawmill to make wooden boats. We work with long lengths to make masts and keels. Then at the beginning of 2020, I had a call to ask if I wanted to cut some long pieces for Notre Dame Cathedral. The oaks that came from the Bercé forest are enormous. We've had to adapt to that. Once cut, each log is between 20 and 25 meters long. There are a few of them of different lengths. I'm the only one who can saw a piece that long. 
In order to carry out this unusual project, the sawmill had to be expanded and equipment modified. They're almost awe-inspiring. They're huge, 15 tons. I tell myself I'm lucky to be able to do this work. Lots of people would love to be in my shoes. Right now it's me. We're aware of how lucky we are to be able to work with these 250-year-old trees that will live on for years in a cathedral. The time has come to saw the first oak. Go for it, Theo. A tree planted before the French Revolution. But the sawing is only done in the presence of the National Forestry Office. We're back with Claire Quinones, who helped to choose these oaks. She explains that these trees haven't been sacrificed for Notre Dame, as some might see it. You can't have sustainable management if you don't renew the forest and at some point the tree is already there. They need to reproduce and make younger trees. After 200 years, the tree has reached maturity and so is ready to be harvested. Beneath it is a whole generation of small trees. Then in 200 years, and that's what's great and what's magic about sustainable management, we'll have new ones just like it. Such a special event deserves a special audience. In this case, members of the media and the head of the Notre Dame construction site himself, General Georges Lain. He says he's been impressed by the commitment of the craftsmen who have come from all over France. The echo from this site is reviving vocational jobs across the country. It's quite incredible. In a sense, it shows to what extent Notre Dame is setting an example, and emblematic. This construction site will leave a legacy. It's a legacy that will only come to life in two years from now, which is when the cathedral is scheduled to reopen. These oaks will have to be dried and assembled by carpenters. They won't actually be installed in the cathedral until 2023. In Paris, time is running out. An almost invisible enemy is hiding up in the cathedral's height. The damp left after the fire service doused the flames, along with bad weather, has caused salt to migrate to the surface of the stones, which are now at risk of crumbling. Giuseppina Jenner is in charge of a crucial operation, desalination. Her teams, six women and 12 men, have just applied a sort of compress to every square centimeter of the cathedral's vaults. It's kaolin, which is clay and very pure sand. We mix it with demineralized water, which is water that has no salt. And we make a mixture that is already stabilized, and then we apply it with this machine, and then we smooth it to a thickness of half a millimeter. Do the last ones, then you can smooth it. This coating is due to be removed in a few months, the time it takes to check that the salt has disappeared and no longer threatens the building. It's a complicated task. There are several phases in restoration. You may see a scaffold, and then, before you know it, it's magnificent. People don't know that everything is done by hand. Of course we have machines that can project, but apart from that, human hands do all the work. It's physical work, but it brings great satisfaction. Giuseppina has been doing restoration work for 20 years, but the Italian specialist says this site has no equivalent in the world. Everyone knows what Notre Dame is when you say its name. Notre Dame has been glorified in books and musicals. Notre Dame is more than a cathedral. It's Disney and all the rest. It was a real shock when we saw the fire. It was terrible for a restorer. Anyway, I'm very happy to be here. A few metres from Giuseppina's building site, the housing of the great organ was spared by the flames, so has not been moved. Nor have its giant front pipes. But the 8,000 others that make up the instrument, as well as its wind chests, have been removed one by one and are being renovated far away from Paris. A 
as far as 700 kilometers in Lodev. Part of the instrument is currently here in this small town in the south of France. It's at this organ workshop run by Charles Sahlo for 24 years. For our company, it's rather rewarding to participate in the restoration of the organ in this place. It's real. It's Notre Dame. There's no question. It means a lot to us, that's for sure. The workshop is restoring the 19 wind chests of the organ right at the heart of the instrument. The wooden base, which holds thousands of pipes. The wind chest is what distributes the air to the pipes. When the organist plays a key on the keyboard, it acts on the valve. It pulls a valve in reality. And so the air rushes through the whole row of notches to feed a note on the keyboard. For example, it's going to make all the founds play in each stop. Then the organist chooses from all his founds which stop he wants to play. I think this one here, for example, is the clairon. And then afterwards you have the trumpet and all the rest, all the instruments. 115 registers make it the largest instrument in France. Once dismantled, it's difficult to imagine its size, 12 meters tall by 12 meters wide. Charles tries to give us an idea. Here you can see a wind chest, but inside the organ there's a certain number of wind chests in a row, and above them are even more. The pipes sit on top of all that, and the organist is there in relation to the casing. And then everything else is contained inside. He has his console outside with his back to the case. And he plays facing that way? And he plays facing the choir. The wind chests were contaminated with lead, so had to be treated before being delivered to the workshop. We took advantage of the fact that everything had been dismantled to carry out a serious inspection of the wind chests. We tested them, or we put them to the wind, so to speak. We put them under pressure in the same conditions as when they're inside the instrument, and we check absolutely all the notes to see if there's any borrowing, or when a note speaks to the next one we're sounding. You shouldn't hear two of them. So we tested all that. We saw there were a few small problems, so we made corrections. And that's it. So here, having a musical ear or not doesn't make a difference. It's not that harmonious, but it works. The organ has been the voice of Notre Dame since 1733, and it must be ready to sing there again in little more than a year. Yes, we'll be happy to hear it again, but you've got to give us a little time to get everything ready beforehand. Each Winchester needs roughly 250 hours of work. Here, like elsewhere, time is running out. A final visit to Notre Dame. There's one major step left before the restoration of the building, dusting and decontamination. During the fire, hundreds of tons of lead melted and then settled as toxic dust all over the building, adding to the dust that had been building up since the 19th century. We must remove this pollution, in particular the lead oxides that have settled and mixed with the initial dust, so that we can work in healthy conditions that comply with safety standards to protect the workers who will be working on the site. Pascal Prunet is checking that the scaffolding has been installed without risk for the decontamination teams. There are still holes in the frame here. There's more than 20 centimeters. It's not normal. We'll have to manage it as well as possible. It's been delicate to erect this scaffolding as close as possible to the building because there are obstacles and they have to be managed and you can't move them. These giant scaffolds have been adapted to fit the complex shapes of the cathedral. It has to include, for example, all the artwork on the outside. This is a very famous group of statues in the cathedral known as the Vow of Louis XIII. It is installed in the axis of the choir. And so you can see it's already been restored a long time ago. These fingers have been repaired or replaced. But then you can see the dirt that had settled inside the stone. 
The result of the dust removal work is striking. You can now see the cathedral's vaults just as its 19th century visitors saw them, immaculately white. With two years to go on the project, the biggest surprise has not come from up here. An exceptional discovery has been made underground. There was a very strong fire here. This is where the spire fell. There was a pile of rubble that we gradually removed, and these elements were discovered underneath. The elements he's referring to are fragments of the former rood screen of Notre Dame, of which only a few pieces had been found, now housed in the Louvre Museum. A human-shaped lead sarcophagus was also dug out, which probably dates from the 14th century. We were able to pass an endoscopic camera inside, which allowed us to identify tissue remains, but also organic matter such as hair and also plant remains, particularly at the head level with small leaves. At first glance, it looked like boxwood, but that is yet to be confirmed. And this is a practice reserved for the social elite. We're not talking about embalming, but about maximum preservation of the body. The fact that these plant remains are still there proves that the contents have been been very well preserved. But the building work must take precedence over this extraordinary discovery. The archaeologists obtained an extension, but will finally have to leave Notre Dame. The spot they've been excavating is needed for the 100 meter scaffolding required to rebuild the spire. Meline Ouets revisiting uh, for the second time Notre Dame there for France at 24. Well, that's all from this week's edition. Don't forget, of course, you can catch it and the previous editions as well on our website. You'll find it all at france24.com. More news coming up very shortly. Thanks for watching.